Hi, I'm Grayson Hicks, a senior software engineer here at Gatsby. I want to share with you a way to do native code splitting with React 18 and how that compares to previous code splitting strategies with Gatsby. Now, some of you may be confused thinking I've never had to worry about code splitting with Gatsby before, and that's true. Typically, Gatsby does such a great job with this out of the box that you don't even have to think about it. Now, others might be saying, I don't know what code splitting is. The best way to think about it is it's essentially telling your code bundler when and how to separate code into different chunks. Okay, so if Gatsby does this really well, then when or why would I need to know about this? Well, part of my team's role here at Gatsby is conducting performance audits for organizations that approach Gatsby for consulting services. One thing we see consistently is that at scale, you may find performance problems that weren't there when your site was smaller. Often, inefficient code splitting is a cause of larger than necessary JavaScript bundles getting delivered to the user and hurting front-end performance. So, when should I worry about this? Well, if I could boil it down to one rule of thumb for when you may or may not need fine-grained code splitting like this, it would be to identify in your site where you are conditionally rendering imports. There's a blog post on our site that goes into a lot more detail on these patterns, but let's look at just one of the most common ones. Here's an example of one of the most common patterns. This pattern is sometimes referred to as flex pages or flex components. Imagine for your organization, you want a page where a content editor can add or order any of your available UI components. They may, in the CMS, choose to create a new page of this type and start adding and ordering them. You need the front-end code to handle this, so essentially you query all the components in that field from the API, you loop over them in React, you check their types, and then you render the corresponding one. So let's look at this previous example and see where we could have a problem. Here we have a heading, text, and carousel component being imported and checked. Now imagine we have a thousand blog pages, but only 100 of them have a carousel on there. And the carousel has 100 kilobytes of dependencies. What do you think the flex page JavaScript bundle will look like? Well, in that case, the carousel would still end up in the flex pages JavaScript bundle. With only a few components, that may not be a big deal, but in our audits, we have found pages like this with nearly 100 components being checked for, and you can imagine the next layer of dependencies of those components. The way to solve for this is to tell Gatsby to allow these chunks to be split separately from the rest of the page's dependencies. So how do we do that? An important thing to remember first here is that Gatsby is all about static generation. And if we take that away, we lose all of our performance benefits. So while there are lots of ways to code split, we need to maintain that server-side rendering. So if we look at the React docs, we're pointed to a great library called Loadable Components. Loadable Components is going to be creating chunks that Gatsby can then collect and add back to the document. To connect it with Gatsby, we use a special plugin that maintains server-side rendering. It's not too hard to set up, but it can be tricky, and it introduces a bit of overhead to both the build and the runtime. The config shown here would successfully split the conditional components out to their own bundles without polluting pages where they are not used. Great! Now, why have I spent all of this time explaining a non-native way of code splitting? Well, it's important to understand why you may need this pattern, but also, the new way should seem far simpler than adding more layers of complexity to achieve something that seems like it should be straightforward. Now, with React 18, we can remove the plugin, remove the loadable dependencies, and replace them with the native react.lazy function. So let's walk through what a migration like that would look like. I'm starting here in a test repo that I've made to help maintain and test the loadable components plugin. I'm creating 10,000 pages and randomly passing in whether the page has a carousel, a heading, text, or some combination through page context. This is only to simulate a content editor's choices in the CMS, and it's unlikely to be the actual pattern that you are using. Looking at the dependencies and at the config, you can see Loadable there, its required plugins, as well as the Gatsby plugin. Now I'm going to run a build and load one of these test pages in the browser. Awesome. Well, first of all, a cached build of 10,000 pages, although they're simple, only 21 seconds, which is awesome to see. All right, now let's serve one of these pages up and let's have a look more closely um, at the page logic to see how we can tell what should and shouldn't be on the page. 
So this is the template itself. You can see it's uh, receiving page context. And then if the page context for that particular component is true, then it renders that component and we can clearly tell whether we should have a heading or a text in these cases and then see if we see the corresponding JavaScript. So let's run our serve. And load one of these pages. I'm going to refresh. This one clearly says it has text. It does not have a carousel and does not have a heading. So now if we check the network tab, we can see that the only chunk we see is for the text. And if we were to inspect more deeply the, uh, the page template here, we would see that it does not include any of the uh, other components. Great, so it works with loadable components, but now let's refactor this to just use React. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump the React and React DOM dependencies to their alpha versions using npm install. If we were to rebuild the site right now, nothing would really change because loadable components is still what we're using to code split. So now let's look at how we swap out the loadable functions for react.lazy. So let's go back to the test page template. Now before we can just swap out the functions here, there's a quirk with react.lazy that you may not have been introduced to yet. And that is that it needs to be wrapped inside of a suspense component and have a fallback prop designated. The suspense component tells React that it may need to wait for some asynchronous code to load inside of it, and the fallback prop tells React what to render while it's waiting. This is especially useful when using suspense on the client side in the browser, but because we're using Gatsby, this is rendered on the server. So while React may still be waiting for these imports, no one should see the fallback prop in our use case. A couple things to do here. First, we are going to wrap the page in react.suspense. Then we are going to give that suspense component its fallback prop. In our case, we're just going to say loading. Next, we can now replace each of these loadable functions with the react.lazy functions. Then we're able to remove this loadable import altogether. And we can also uninstall all of the dependencies that we were relying on for loadable to work. I've now uninstalled all of these dependencies. Now I need to remove the loadable components plugin from the Gatsby config. So Gatsby does not try to use it anymore. And now I'm ready to run another build. All right, build is complete again, and I'm going to serve this up. And let's reload the page. So on this test page, because it was random, it's gonna be slightly different than what we saw before. This one does have a heading and text, but not a carousel. So. In this case, these are our two bundles here of the heading and the text. Now let's try to find one with the carousel. Here's our carousel and you can see the impact, um, in this case, about 10 kilobytes that the carousel is having on the page. Um, if we go back again to test page one, that 10 kilobytes is not there. So our code splitting is working as intended using only Gatsby and React. So this is only a small slice of the developer experience improvements that React 18 unlocks, but hopefully this is a strategy and pattern that can help your team continue to scale and grow with Gatsby. Thanks for attending.